people following me, checking everything I do, where I spend my money, where I send my kids to school. What's it all about? It doesn't make sense. Okay, Garvey, we've said it before. We can wait it out as long as you want. Look, let's get this thing straight. Let's go back to the beginning and take it step by step. Okay, fine. The hold-up was last fall, wasn't it? Sometime in October? October 7th, Monday, 5.20 in the afternoon. All right, now just what am I supposed to have done? None of your vague references about a new coat for my wife or where I send my kids to school. Let's have some facts. Joe? All right, Garvey. You went to work as a jewelry salesman for the company ten years ago. Your friend Tom Ashley, the victim, started the same year. The two of you have been pretty close friends. That's right. I told you that. We'll skip the rest of your background for now. Two weeks before the robbery on September 24th, you had a meeting with a Kenneth Tyson. You met him in a cafeteria on South Broadway. Tyson's 19 years old. He lives with an older sister. He works in a gas station on Olympic Boulevard. He's done some work in your car for you. That's how you happen to know him. Yes, I think I remember the boy. I don't know him well, though. I don't recall the meeting either. You know the boy very well. At the time of the meeting, you promised him $1,000 if he'd hold up your friend Tom Ashley. Ridiculous. Tyson agreed to it, and you briefed him on the plan. The following day, you gave him a gun, a 32 caliber Smith & Wesson, serial number 362744. Nonsense. Where did you get that information? Tyson. He's lying. Believe me, if he told you that, he's lying. Is he the one who robbed Tom? October 7th, at your direction, he was in the parking lot behind the Hunter Crosswell building. Tom Ashley came out to get in his car. He had a case of sample diamonds with him. Tyson held him up, slugged him, took the stones, and got away. Of course, it's obvious. Tyson's trying to say I put him up to it. He's trying to get out of it that way. I'm afraid not, Garvey. The boy couldn't have carried off the holdup by himself. Of course he could. It's obvious he's trying to cover up. There were six people in the company you worked for who knew that on Mondays, Ashley always took the case of sample diamonds along when he made his calls. Only on Mondays. You were one of the people who knew that. I suppose you've considered the other five people. They were all checked out at the time. They are all cleared. You along with them. Well, I'm not clear anymore, is that it? This young hoodlum Tyson, you're willing to take his word over mine. After the robbery took the case of diamonds to you, that was the next day. You paid him $500 and promised him the other 500 when you got rid of the stone. Oh, I suppose I've gotten rid of them, or do I still have them? Which? Two months after the holdup, you contacted a fence up in San Francisco. You drove up there and sold him some of the stones. He broke them up and then he sold them. We know who he sold them to. We know what he got for him. This fence, he's supposed to be another good friend of mine? You're still doing business with him. His name's Fred Lawrence. It's a new one on me. I don't know any Fred Lawrence. Can't even recall the name. Maybe this will help you, Garvey. Listen to him on the tape recorder. What's all this about? Phone conversation, Garvey. One of the things we recorded from your office. Let's see, this one was on March 18th. I always thought wiretapping was against the law, or do you pay any attention to that? We didn't tap your telephone line. We recorded everything from dictographs we installed in your store and back in your office. They started recording the day you moved in. That was March the 1st, wasn't it? I don't know why you're telling me. I can sue you for that, you know. I can sue you for your last dollar. All we're concerned with right now is Fred Lawrence. You say you don't know him. I'd like to have you listen to this. Recorded March 18th in your office. All right? Nothing at all. You told us a few minutes ago you didn't know Fred Lawrence. You never heard of him. On that recording, sounds like you know him pretty well. It's a fairly common name, wouldn't you say? Must be quite a few Fred Lawrences. I didn't happen to remember the name right off. How about Tyson? What? Tyson. You told us you didn't know him well at all. I don't. Didn't sound that way on the tape. You were telling Lawrence he was all right. You said, believe me, he's a good kid. How about it, mister? How about what? Is this some kind of a frame? What are you trying to make me say? We're not going to make you say anything, Garvey. We work robbery detail. That's the job, robberies. They pay us to clean them up. I can pay you. What? Never mind, I didn't mean that. I meant I pay my taxes, I pay your salaries, I help to anyway. I don't know why I have to be treated like this. No reason to make a big headache out of this for everybody, Garvey. You engineered a hold-up and we can prove it. We're giving you a chance to make a statement, that's all. I've got nothing to say. Make a statement about what? 
All you're going on is hearsay, circumstantial evidence. You can't say I planned that robbery. You admit you know Tyson. You know him well. I don't. I admit nothing. What about the phone conversation? It's a fake. They phony those things up all the time. You know it as well as I do. You admit it. You know Fred Lawrence. We proved that on the recording. I admit nothing. You don't even know Tyson. Is that what you want to say? I know him. That's all. He worked on my car a couple of times. I don't know him well. I'd like to play you another recording, Garvey. A waste of time. I haven't got the whole day to spend here. I've got to get back to my store. I've got a business to operate. Won't take very long. Here we are, April 5th. A lot of foolishness anyway. How do I know how you made those recordings? You could have gotten actors, made them up yourselves. There weren't any dictographs. How did you make those things? There were dictographs, Garvey. You remember before you moved in that new suite of offices, you had them redecorated? Yes. There were sound technicians from our crime lab out there working side by side with the painters, carpenters. Installed dictographs in your store. Back in your offices, they bugged the entire place. Wiretapping. I'll bring this into court if it's the last thing I do. We already told you, Garvey, it's not wiretapping. We didn't touch your phone lines. We didn't have to. Invasion of privacy. I'm going to bring this into court. All right, let's hear this recording. It might clear up a few things, huh? Clear up what? What are you trying to prove? Okay, Joe. Yeah. Okay. Date on this is April 5th. Bad ones at that. Now look, I'll give you both a chance. Either you book me in on a charge or else release me. You try booking me in and I'll sue you for false arrest. I'll break you. I'll sue you blind. I promise you that. Yeah. Release me and I'll get back to work. I'll forget all about it. Now you name it, which one? Book me in or release me? That's fair enough. You're giving us a choice. You bet it's fair. You could get in a lot of hot water. Now it's up to you. Which one? You ran a bad bluff, mister. What? We're booking you in. 